happy to see you. If you're new here, please be coming. We always have episodes every day to just strengthen us in the faith. And if you have always kept it here, we hope we we are learning together. Uh, we'll go to our study for today. And today, we're actually reciting our favorite psalm. It is my favorite psalm from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. And see what lessons we can pick. So we want to look at the good shepherd. Shall we pray before we begin? Our Father in heaven, we ask that you will still guide us. We thank you for you are our good shepherd. We ask that you will lead us in this path of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is a psalm that the whole world, a majority of people know it. And uh, it comes from Psalms chapter 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me down to lie in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. So, this was written by David. And I wonder what experience David got to the point that he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So let's go back to verse 1, where David writes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we look at a few characteristics of a shepherd. Because I feel like this is the best illustration that David could use in his experience to describe God. But what do we know about shepherd? In, in the Middle East, the shepherd normally goes before the flock. And so the flock follow from behind. Well, in some countries, uh, the shepherd normally follows the flock, but we don't want to take that example. But the shepherd is known to go before the flock. And so the flock readily follows because they have gotten to the point where they can trust their shepherd to lead them safely to where they can find pasture and nourishment. And so what are some of the characteristics of a shepherd? And we're going to get them from the Bible. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 9 to 11, it writes, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom. And so, the shepherd is responsible for making sure that the sheep are properly fed. He also gather the lambs, the young ones of the, of the flock, and carry them in his arms. Because he knows that they are probably weak, they can't handle the long walk, he carries them in his hands, in his arms. Um, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 23, the Bible says, I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. And so it is the responsibility of the shepherd to make sure the flock is well nourished and to also keep the flock from any danger that can come from either wild animals or attack from neighboring communities. And so, just the same way the Lord was the shepherd to David, God also should be our shepherd. We should get our nourishment from God through his word and through an experience with him. And so when David equates the Lord to a shepherd and him having been a shepherd, it shows just how much God, how much care God has for his flock. And I'll skip to the last verse in that psalm, which is verse 6, that says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Meaning, David has gotten to a point that in between, from the point he decided to make God his shepherd, to the point that he's saying this, that goodness and mercy shall follow him all the days of his life, he has had an experience with God. He has seen just how much God has saved him from danger, sin or unseen. How much God has provided for him. And today, I want to challenge us to embark on this journey. To make God our new shepherd. Probably, we haven't had an experience with God before. How about we chose to make God our shepherd? And I'm sure if that's a decision we make today, we will get to a point where, like David, We'll say surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life because we have gotten to a point of actually trusting God and actually letting, letting him lead in our lives. Well, I want to assume it's not an easy place to get to. It's not an easy point to get to. But it's a journey of trust. It's a progress made day by day in our relationship with God. It's a decision to make God our shepherd each day of our lives and let him lead. And when he does, then we know that he will lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We know that even though we'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, then he's going to be with us. His rod and his staff is going to, com to comfort us. He's going to prepare us a table in the presence of our enemies and he's going to fill our cups and our cups are going to run over. And so I pray that we will make God our shepherd, that we will choose to be in his flock. I mean, Christ wants to be our shepherd and he will feed us, he will water us, he will protect us, he will take care of us and ultimately he will lead us to his home, which is the heavenly home he has prepared for all his sins. And so, may you experience the loving, tender care of this new shepherd you're choosing to have in your life.